Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We asked for controversy and we got it. Week 13 was full of great games, some big upsets, but none bigger for the college football playoff committee than Ohio State's upset win over number four Michigan. Beating the Wolverines by 23, Ohio State jumped from number 10 in the country to now number six, Michigan falling all the way from number four to number seven. This poses a bit of a problem for the college football playoff committee entering the final week of the season, entering the weekend of conference championship games. So as we all know, this is the second to last set of rankings before we have our final rankings that come out on Sunday, December 2nd. And as always, we're gonna break down these rankings, share our analysis and some scenarios that could play out over the course of this upcoming weekend with some of the big games, including Alabama and Georgia, Oklahoma, Texas, and Ohio State in Northwestern. So we're going to analyze the college football playoff committee's uh, selections, their second to last set of rankings, and go through all of that. And as I mentioned, with that huge win uh, for Ohio State, they are now number six and back in the hunt for the college football playoff. And we're going to break down the scenarios first off. The top four uh, remaining unchanged except for Georgia slipping in because of Michigan's loss. So now you have Alabama and Georgia both in the top four. And one of them, of course, is going to lose this weekend in the SEC championship game. And, of course, many people would immediately go and pick Alabama. Uh, and, and that is extremely possible. I think they're 13, 14-point favorites right now. Uh, I personally will be picking Alabama when we do our, uh, our conference championship predictions, which will be coming out soon. Uh, so Alabama regardless of the, of the win or loss in the SEC championship, though, should be in the college football playoff. Uh, and we break down these scenarios for you because really starting with the bow, uh, Michigan up are teams that are technically still on the hunt. Now I'll explain why I think Michigan's still in it here in one second. But right now you have Alabama, Georgia. Bama's undefeated, has annihilated all of their opponents, has huge shutout wins over teams like LSU and Mississippi State, uh, a big-time win over Texas A&M, plenty of ranked opponents still on their resume uh, going into this final week of the season. And if they lose to Georgia in a close game, which I, I believe this game will be close, uh, so by one possession, then Alabama will still be in the college football playoff. They win, they're in. They lose, maybe they drop from first to third, first to fourth. But I don't see any possible way Alabama is left out of the college football playoff unless they just get annihilated by Georgia, and I do not see that happening. Georgia, on the other hand, they have to win to get in. If they lose, they're out, and they'll be going to a New Year's Six Bowl game, more than likely the Sugar Bowl down in New Orleans. Uh, but if they win that game, they will remain in the college football playoff uh, and potentially set up another showdown against Alabama in the national championship, much like we saw uh, just last year. Clemson, they win. They're also in. They got a game against Pittsburgh, a 7-5 and five team who struggled mightily on the road against a Miami team that really isn't all that great. Clemson, I think 27-point favorites entering the weekend, should take easy care of the Panthers, and they will once again be in the college football playoff and should claim that two seed unless Alabama struggles uh, or falls to Georgia, in which case they would run up to uh, number one. Notre Dame, of course, being an independent, does not have a, uh, a conference championship game, and they're a lock. Uh, being sitting there at 12-0, there is no reason that Notre Dame should be left out of the college football playoff. And I know there are some scenarios where people think they maybe they could slip back down to number five, uh, and I would just be absolutely livid if that was the case. There's no reason uh, that Notre Dame should be left out of that. They might drop from three to four, uh, but they will make the college football playoff. In my mind, they are a lock, and I think the committee feels the exact same way. The chaos and the and, and the, the fun really begins when you hit number five. And, and in recent years, we've seen teams that maybe people believe should have gotten in sitting there at number five and number six. I mean, those are the uh, two that are right on the outside looking in every year. I mean, there's always usually controversy among those teams ranked number five and number six. And you've got Oklahoma right now uh, sitting pretty after a very good win on the road against a very solid West Virginia team, having a rematch against Texas in the Big 12 championship game. So number five versus number 14. As always, we'll break down these games in more detail when we do our uh, conference championship predictions. Uh, but Oklahoma, in my eyes, is, is a, in a win-and-get-in scenario. If they beat Texas, and assuming Alabama does beat Georgia, then Oklahoma should claim that fourth spot uh, over the Bulldogs. They'll replace the Bulldogs there, assuming the Crimson Tide get the job done there. Uh, or if somehow Clemson lost, uh, which I highly doubt, they would take their spot as well. But Oklahoma's in a very good spot right now, uh, assuming Alabama does take care of Georgia. Ohio State still has a little bit of work to do, and the controversy uh, will really begin with Oklahoma and Ohio State. If Alabama beats Georgia and uh, Oklahoma and Ohio State both win, who's going to get that coveted fourth spot? There's going to be a lot of controversy there, saying, well, Ohio State has key wins, a blowout win against Michigan. They have a key win on the road against Penn State, while Oklahoma has a big win against West Virginia, has a good win against Texas. Uh, and, and to me, I think Oklahoma deserves to get in over Ohio State. And before people start bashing me for this, let me explain my reasoning. You look at Oklahoma. To me, 
the, the strength of schedule, the stats all line up very equally for Oklahoma and Ohio State. But it comes down to strength of schedule in my eyes. Maybe Ohio State does own the edge there playing some uh, higher quality Big Ten opponents. But for me, it comes down to the quality losses. And yes, there are such things as quality losses, and Oklahoma has that. Their lone loss would be to Texas, who right now is number 14 in the country. And they only lost that game by three points. I know they were down like 21 or something like that. Uh, but they battled all the way back, losing in the final seconds to Texas. They would get revenge on the team that beat them in the Big 12 championship game. Ohio State lost to Purdue, a team that barely made a bowl game, sitting at 6-6, six and six, had to beat Indiana last weekend just to get to bowl eligibility, lost to them by 29. To me, it, it is a no-brainer that if everything plays out the way we think it will and it comes down to Oklahoma or Ohio State for the fourth spot, it should go to the Sooners. And I know a lot of people are criticizing the defense and the committee's going to sit there and think, well, which team truly deserves Which team is better all the way around? Uh, you know, offense, defense, special teams, everywhere. And maybe that might be Ohio State, but I think Oklahoma deserves the edge there. And I know everybody would love to see a game where Tua Tungabailoa goes up against Kyler Murray, the two Heisman front runners going at it. Maybe Alabama would annihilate it. Maybe Oklahoma's defense won't, wouldn't show up for that game. I don't know. But I know ratings be, be, would be through the roof for that game. I know the attendance would be huge for that game. And I know uh, myself and many others would love to see that great quarterback battle and a game that could uh, turn in uh, to a high-scoring shootout. Uh, so I think Oklahoma gets that spot there uh, above Ohio State. And, and part of that will also come into uh, the margin of victory. How much will Oklahoma beat Texas by if they win it all? How much will Ohio State beat Northwestern by if they win it all? Uh, if, if Ohio State annihilates Northwestern, Oklahoma struggles against Texas and shows some struggles that the committee uh, feels like might not be beneficial to them going to the college football playoff, then maybe Ohio State makes the jump. But I just don't see any reason that should happen. If everything plays out, Oklahoma should get that fourth spot, assuming, once again, Alabama defeats Georgia in the SEC title game. Now, the biggest thing we have to think about, and this is extremely possible. I mean, we've seen crazier things happen in college football. This is the final week of the season. This is conference championship week where we know anything can happen. What if Georgia loses to Alabama? What if Oklahoma loses to Texas and Ohio State somehow lost the 21st ranked Northwestern? What if the four, five, and six teams all lost? Then who gets that coveted fourth spot? Who slips in then? Some people say it should still be Georgia. Some people believe that maybe Georgia just stick in there. Right? There are only two losses coming to 10th ranked LSU by 20 and more than likely a close loss to Alabama in the SEC championship game. Whereas Oklahoma would have two losses, uh, both coming to the same team in Texas. Uh, Ohio State would have two losses, one coming by 29, as we mentioned, to Purdue, and another one coming to, uh, I think, an 8-4 and four Northwestern team. So that's some of the committee would have to figure out. So would Michigan, a two-loss team losing to just Notre Dame and Ohio State, move into the fourth spot? Would UCF? potentially slip in there. And I don't see any way that could happen. As much as I personally would love to see that, just to just to see those UCF fans get in there. We've been hearing the complaints all along. They finally got game day to come there. They got everything they've wanted. And nothing to take away from the Knights. The fact that they've won, what, 25 straight games, something like that, is unbelievable. They've been playing some phenomenal football over the past two years. Uh, and that's carried over from the Scott Frost era now to the Josh Heupel era. But problem is Mackenzie Milton is out with injury. He will not be back for the conference championship game. And they, I doubt he'll be back for their bowl game uh, at all, and that's very unfortunate for them. Some even believe that had he stayed healthy in that season finale against South Florida, UCF would be ranked seventh and Michigan would be eighth. And I do agree Michigan got very lucky only dropping four spots there. I think they should have dropped a little bit more. Uh, so is it, if the possibility of those four, five, and six teams losing, who then jumps into the fourth spot? Because it can't be Florida with three losses. It can't be LSU with three losses. Uh, you've got an undefeated Central Florida team there, a two-loss Michigan team uh, losing to, uh, to, to the number three team in the country then the number six team in the country at the time. So that's going to be something really, really interesting and something that I, the committee, I'm sure, is praying does not happen because they'll be under a lot of scrutiny uh, and uh, it'll just be utter chaos in that, in that meeting room, that conference room, trying to decide your top four teams on uh, Sunday afternoon. So that's, that is a legit possibility, though, and something they have to be prepared for. Me personally, I feel like that were to happen, I think Michigan would be the team to rise up and get in. I can't see them putting in UCF. Certainly nobody below UCF there. Uh, and I think Michigan would have to be the team that slips in there because they have two quality losses, even though one of them was in blowout fashion to the Buckeyes. So it's going to be a very chaotic weekend uh, for, for many of these schools, very chaotic weekend for the college football playoff committee as well. Looking through the rest of the rankings, because like I said, these other rankings do matter. They still play a major role. Uh, once again, as we mentioned over and over again, the committee still showing emphasis on head-to-head -head competition, head-to-head -head results. Florida, uh, even though uh, LSU was ranked higher than them just last week, Florida now ahead of the Tigers. 
Uh, and, and rightfully so, after a dominating win on the road against Florida State, uh, LSU losing in that seven overtime thriller to Texas A&M. And uh, Florida and LSU both being three loss teams that I mentioned, but the Gators owning the tiebreaker head to head wise uh, over over LSU there. Uh, and we see that a couple other times throughout here. I believe Mississippi State uh, with uh, the tiebreaker over Texas A&M uh, and a couple other scenarios here. Uh, Boise State over Fresno State. Uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, very impressed and very good in my eyes that the committee takes that into consideration and doesn't screw that up. I don't believe if you win, you should be ranked below a team that you beat. I, I just don't see that happening, unless, of course, you're a two-loss team and the other guys won. So you, you know how it goes. Uh, looking through the rest of this, though, we mentioned UCF having that injury to Mackenzie Milton at the quarterback position. That is an issue there only because UCF now has to play in the American Athletic Conference Championship game against Memphis, a team they only beat 31-30 to back in the regular season. They were down, I think, 16, 17 points in that game before battling all the way back and clinching the win there. And that game, of course, being at Memphis, so nothing to take away there. It was on the road. This game will be back uh, in Orlando. Uh, but how will UCF respond? If they lose that game, obviously any shot at the being in the playoff is out. But then... They're probably not going to make a New Year's Six Bowl game like they want because New York Six Bowl berth goes to the highest ranked Group of Five conference champion. They would not be, which means the Mountain West Conference Championship between Boise State and Fresno State would more likely determine who goes to a New Year's Six Bowl game. And I'm going to pick Boise State in that one. I think Boise State, having home field advantage, having already beaten Fresno State this season, would get that uh, the edge there and maybe go to a New Year's Six Bowl game. That'd be huge for Brian Harson and Brett Rippon and those group of seniors uh, up there in, in Boise. So uh, th this game for UCF is huge to try to continue that uh, winning streak, to continue to get back to a New Year's Six Bowl game, uh, and going up against a very solid Memphis squad and a very dangerous Memphis run game led by Daryl Henderson. So this is going to be something that you really want to keep your eye on. The American Athletic Conference Championship uh, has not disappointed in years past. UCF Memphis has not disappointed in the past couple meetings there. Uh, so that's going to be huge for the committee uh, just in terms of uh, who gets that New Year's Six Bowl berth for the group of five teams. So that's going to be big uh, overall there. Conference uh, championship week, as we all know, my, in my opinion, one of the better weeks of all of college football because you've got teams like Pittsburgh, you've got teams like Texas, you've got teams uh, like your group of five schools here, uh, you've got teams like Northwestern, guys that aren't even in the hunt for making the college football playoff, aren't even in the hunt necessarily for making a major bowl game, but are trying to play spoiler, trying just to get that title to their name. So yes, you've got your Clemsons and your Ohio States and your Oklahomas, guys like that, uh, but these are still big games for the schools that maybe aren't in contention for the college football playoff, and that's why these guys are going to be playing their hearts out, trying to play spoiler and throw the committee and the college football playoff into utter chaos. And personally, that's what I want to see. I have no biasness and I have no uh, you know anger or discretions against any of these teams here, but we all want to see a little fun, see some crazy things happen, uh, and we certainly have the potential to see that. So make sure you all stay tuned for our conference championship predictions. We will be breaking down all of the Power 5 uh, conference championships and also one other group of five conference championship. You'll have to wait and find out which one that will be. So as always, please go check us out on Twitter as well at Gridiron Expert. We'll have spread picks and prediction changes coming out on there, although there will be no more prediction changes now that the regular season is complete. And as always, continue to watch us here on YouTube and like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you next time on the Gridiron Expert.